start at the beginning because the government has a motion which is going to be voted on Tuesday evening after seven o'clock and that is basically setting out its plan for the withdrawal agreement, that 585 page document. Now that motion... That's the one that was postponed, wasn't it? That was the one that was postponed in December. Now that motion that the government sets down for Parliament to approve it was supposed to be unamendable, i.e. MPs couldn't dip in and say, well I don't like this bit here, I want this here, No no thank you to that or yes please to this. That didn't happen this afternoon because the Speaker, John Burko, overruled his clerks, his impartial legal advice, and said, actually, I'm not going to listen to your advice. I'm going to make my own decision and I'm going to allow Remain Conservative MPs, led by Dominic Grieve, the former Attorney General, to table a change to Theresa May's Brexit plan, which will shorten the amount of time the Prime Minister has to come back to the House of Commons, should, as expected, she loses that vote on Tuesday evening, and present an alternative plan B. Now, the Prime Minister had it down uh, as planned that she would return to the Parliament within 21 sitting yep. days. But that would take uh, the House of Commons right into the middle, end of February, to come to, to hear what her alternative would be. Remainers don't like it because... It is increasingly close to uh, the deadline when we leave the European Union. The default option is without uh, a deal. deal. And so they successfully shortened it to three days. And so the Prime Minister would need to return to the Commons by by the 21st of January. That's Monday the 21st of January with an alternative. Now, the Speaker, when he has presided over the House of Commons since 2009 and the expenses candle, a scandal has been assiduous. When an MP has presented something to him and it hasn't been in the rule book, he said, I'm very sorry, that would set a precedent. I can't help you with that. You'll have to find another way in order to get your point across. But today, he ripped up the precedent and said actually he was going to impose his own will. And that is what angered uh, leavers within the Conservative Party, including the Deputy Chairman of the European Research Group, Marc Francois. A point of order, Mr Marc Francois. For the convenience of the House, I have brought with me a copy of the original business motion, which says very clearly, and which was passed by this House on the 4th of December 2018. Under the general paragraph towards the end of the motion, Mr Speaker, it says, and I quote, no motion to vary or supplement the provisions of this order shall be made except by a Minister of the Crown, and the question on any such motion shall be put, shall be put forth with. That was a motion of the House. Now, Mr Speaker, I have not been in this House as long as you, but I have been here for 18 years, and I have never known any occasion when any Speaker has overruled a motion of the House of Commons. So, just to finish, sir, just to finish, you have said again and again you are a servant of this House, and we take you at your word. And I have heard you many times on points of order when people have challenged you said, I cannot do X or Y because I am bound by a motion of the House. You've done that multiple times in my experience. So why are you overriding a motion of the House today? Answer. The answer to the... I thank the Right Honourable Gentleman for his point of order and also for his characteristic courtesy. The answer is simple. The Right Honourable Gentleman referred to a motion, and he said that no motion in this context, for the purposes of Bracey, may be moved other than by a Minister of the Crown. Tis so. We are not treating here of a motion, but of an amendment to a motion. Well, I'm sorry, but there is a distinction between order... There is, a disti- there is a distinction between a motion and an amendment. What the right order, what the right honourable gentleman says about a motion, I accept, 
but it doesn't relate to an amendment. That's the answer. So no, there is no further. My job is not to be a cheerleader for the executive branch. My job is to stand up for the rights of the House of Commons. And the Speaker will assuredly do so. For many of us, we will now have an unshakable conviction that the referee of our affairs is no longer neutral. The risk is that it's terribly convenient for everybody to kick the can down the road. The government kicks the can down the road, and perhaps even Parliament kicks the can down the road. It's wake-up time. We have a really serious problem, and we've got to try to do something to address it. Um, I am not a fan of John Burko. I do understand uh, that in some ways he's given backbenchers a little bit more power, a little bit more ability to speak in the Commons since he had the job. Uh, but I, for many reasons, don't like John Burko. Least of, I mean, least of all because... The Speaker, for 800 years, has been neutral. Even during the English Civil War, the Speaker managed to stay neutral. And we have a Speaker who is politically partial. Remember his comments about Donald Trump, for example. Well, he's in, quite a lot of backbenchers thought, in terms of the job, he was doing it OK. It's just his personality and the fact that he isn't politically neutral. And I, I, I genuinely think um, that it would be better for Mr Burko to stand down, to resign, rather than get forced at some point out of that office in a very undignified way. The, the, the question of the confidence in the Speaker is a matter for the House of Commons, not for the government. There's the issue that uh, has uh, underlines this is the question of rules in the House of Commons. Uh, members of Parliament need to know that there is a set of rules in the House of Commons. They need to know that there will be consistent interpretation of those rules so that they know how they can operate within the House. Uh, obviously, the Speaker made a decision on a particular amendment. I was surprised at that, uh, at that decision. Thank you, Mr Speaker. As you will have heard today, there are some concerns about the decision that you've taken in the context of the House motion that's before us. And I wondered, therefore, if you could please confirm that your decision was taken with full advice from the Clerk of the House of Commons and other senior parliamentary advisers, and whether you might consider, under these circumstances, publishing that advice for the further... <laughs> I thank the Leader of the House for her point of order, and what I say to her is twofold. First of all, of course I consult the Clerk of the House and other senior clerks, and I hear their advice. That advice is tendered to me privately, and that's absolutely proper. That's absolutely proper. But it is also true that I had a written note from the clerk from which I quoted in responding to the first point of order. If the right honourable lady is... If the right honourable lady... If the... If the... If the right honourable lady... If the Right Honourable Lady is inquiring whether there is what she might consider in governmental terms full written advice, a paper or a written brief or whatever, there is none such. I have just told the Right Honourable Lady what the situation is and I quoted from what was provided to me by the Clerk of the House and I have given my ruling and that is the situation. Folks, you know what's going on here as well as I do. The political class in Westminster simply don't accept the Brexit result and they will do everything they can to frustrate it, delay it, dilute it, get rid of it. Um, and this includes, in my opinion, 
the Speaker of the House, John Burko. He is not impartial on this or, frankly, any other issue. I think he's stepped way over the mark today. He's broken with parliamentary precedent. He's ignored the legal advice he was given by the clerks of the House. He's refused to publish that advice. You know, a few months ago, he was going to be sacked, wasn't he? Remember the bullying scandal? All of those things that were being said, he was going to be sacked. It's the Labour Party, predominantly, that kept him in place. And they kept him in place because he wants to disrupt Brexit.